River of Venom, Stage 9, no Legos, no Garius, no Frobart, only Epic Gear. Let's check out. Hello guys, I've been looking for a free-to-play team without legendaries, without legendary gear, no Frobart and no Garius because everyone uses those characters to do Grave of Phenom. And since then, I've been trying several characters and I came with a comp without those characters and some of them, um, I mean, one of them, it's really free to play, it's Horus, so everyone should have Horus, they got it from Season 1. But then we have the other epic ones, okay, that I hope they are from Season 1, so I really hope that everyone has these characters as well. So this one can be replaced, okay, it's the DPS. Of course, all the other ones, if you have like stronger legendaries, you can replace them as well. But Oros here, that sh everyone should have, and also Dolphus are really, really the important ones. Okay, so this is the placement I have. This boss is really hard, especially stage 9. But guys, this is the gear I'm using. It's only epic, only epic gear, no more. And they are level 100, because at this point, um, at least in season 3, we are able to get to level 100. If you want to use this build in a different season, I think you, you can do it as well. Especially season 1, uh, season 2, because season 1 it's different placement, it's easier. But basically, let's talk about the strategy I'm using. So I'm using Horus, he's an amazing tank and he can take loads of damage. Especially if you are giving him some HP as well, he can heal himself. Um, with the ultimate, he will give this damage reduction, he's gonna hit recovery, he's gonna get some HP, so he's going to hit him, heal himself. I'm not counting with this attack penalty, uh, I have this guy to give attack penalty. And then we have the passive that gives a shield, an extra shield, for 5 seconds, and every 7 seconds this can happen for 10 max HP, 10% max HP. So... This guy is really strong, he's really, really strong. If you are using a Scarab amulet, he is gonna help him a lot to give him a, another extra shield and more survivability. And then we have Adolphus, and Adolphus is really important because this guy, so Horus gets a lot of shields, and Adolphus with this passive is gonna heal uh, everyone with the extra shield. So additional heals them equal to 75% of the shields granted. Alright, and also this battle skill will be really important because he grants an increase of ultimate energy by 15% to an ally. And usually he's going to give this battle skill to our tank taking damage. So he's going to increase his ultimate. It's already 14.6 seconds because I have a lot of skill list. I have this gear. He's going to improve, he's going to cast this around 10, 11, 12 seconds every uh, turn. That this box takes. All right, so this is the the major the major strategy is from these two guys. This is what so this guy will tank the boss all all the time, and this guy will make sure that keeps everyone alive. But this boss takes a lot. But this boss does a lot of damage, and we need some mo more something extra, and we need something extra. So we have Nathaniel. So this one you can replace if you have a stronger, a stronger healer or a stronger guy um, or a stronger healer or a stronger character that can give massive shields, then you can replace Nathaniel. But in this case I'm using Nathaniel because he's really good. He's going to give a shield to everyone, defense up as well and some recovery over time and also this passive is going to heal the ally with the lowest current HP by 5% max HP. So he's going to give a shield to everyone and then Adolphus will over shield over them and is going to give them also some healing. So double shield and Adolphus will shield and heal at the same time. Then we have Vultog, again this one you can replace as well but at this point it's really hard but you have someone that can give double debuff, it's really important. So this guy is going if he doesn't have two debuffs at least, he's going to attack a random enemy and if he attacks someone else than one of those tanks, he's going to one-shot someone for sure, if it's not the tank. So for that reason I want to make sure I'm casting this before 18 seconds, because this boss takes 
each turn takes 18 seconds, guys, as you can see. So I want him to use the attack, uh, the double debuff here and keep doing that every turn. And also you need 220 accuracy uh, to make sure you're applying these buffs or even more because still if you have 20, 220 borderline, sometimes he misses the one of those debuffs and we want to make sure he casts and applies those debuffs every time. And that's why I'm using Spiritual Incense Burner. Gives me some accuracy and make sure it's reducing my ultimate energy. Energy this way, I'm going to give double, double debuff every turn. Again, same thing. He gains defense up with the battle skill, but the passive is going to get also some extra defense up uh, and accuracy with all the the buffs. So he's going to get some defense, some defense up from this so defense up from here and recover over time from here so it's already two which is really good and finally we have tunnelman is a massive damage dealer uh i've tried several ones so if you want to use a ranged one then don't place him here if you want to use a uh, melee then place him here because nathaniel is gonna help to keep him alive with recover over time and shields if not and you are going to use a ranged one you can place him around here Okay, so after killing this one, uh, this Flame of Element is going to focus the Deadly RP because if you place here, it's going to focus this one, then that one, and finally the RP, and maybe you don't have time to kill the boss if that happens. So this will be the best position, and this way the boss will not target this guy, okay? Because the only skill that will hit you will be this one, and we don't want him to hit with this one, so... We want to make sure he's going to hit only this tree and not this one. Alright, so it's, if you have a ranged one, you can place him on these positions, or if you want, you can place him here as well. But if it's a melee, this is the best position. That's how I did. And also, I'm using this hour from uh, Aorus 24% max HP. This is, this, this is it, the strategy. So, no Garius, because a lot of people complaining they don't have Garius. No Frobart, a lot of people complain they don't have Frobart. And also I'm using Epic Gear. If you're already reaching stage 9, um, probably you have a better gear. I'm sure you have Epic Gear. At least we aim to have a full set of Epic Gear. And probably the most difficult thing for you will be get uh, 20 artifact, 20 level on every artifact. But I hope you have some legendary that you can replace on one of these characters. Especially this one. Imagine if you have Elminster, you can replace for, for Nathaniel. Uh, instead of this guy, if you have someone with double debuff, you can replace him as well. Orus is a massive tank. Um, besides Garius or Adret, uh, I'm not sure how you can replace him. He's really good for, for this stage 9. And then you can replace this one for any other strong DPS that you have. You just need a really strong DPS. I tried with some rares. So I tried with some lightning ones. And I'm going to tell you guys... So I tried with, no, not this one. I tried with this one in this position and uh, I didn't do it. The damage was not enough. Uh, then I tried also with Vorish. The damage was also not enough. Uh, you can replace Vorish with Nathaniel and use another DPS. It's a bit more harder and not so consistent. So this will be using someone with shield uh, to Adolfo's overshield over that and give some healing. It's like the best option, guys. So let's check the fight guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Let's have a look how this battle went. So this is auto mode and the only time I'm using, the only timing is for Vultog. Is it Vultog? Forgot him. Uh, for this guy, uh, 18 seconds skill casting interval. So let's go, let's see uh, how long I take and how it goes. So guys, at the start of the, f of the fight, you can see they start getting so much damage, uh, but then Nathaniel casts that shield, defense up, and um, soon they start recovering. Tonelman does an amazing damage as well, which helps a lot. If we don't have enough damage, then we're not gonna kill this uh, guy. Um, and remember, I know this is gonna take a little bit, because, I mean, most of these characters are support and tanks and not really damage dealers. But just think about this. If you are taking 3-4 minutes to do one of these fights, uh, you're gonna get, I'm, I'm pretty sure, at least one Legendary, I hope, <laughs> or maybe even Mythics, and with this you're getting your character stronger, 
and meanwhile you're gonna do like five imagine five ten runs of these that take a little bit more time just use some auto tickets and after those ten runs uh, you can use even use the double tickets the one the multi tickets and with that you just need to do five runs you get materials for ten runs and you're probably getting some nice legendary gear and then you can upgrade your heroes and maybe you just don't need to use so much support uh, maybe you can replace some of these with more damage because at, by that time you will have much better gear that you can equip your units and they will be much stronger you're gonna do this even quicker and yeah that's that's my main goal with this build it's to start with a free to play team and get some strong gear and with this you can replace the gear you have with legendary gear and then it's gonna boost all your your damage it's gonna boost all your team and yeah it's gonna help you every in every content uh, vortex uh, if you want to do grave of curse uh, all the other content grave of road of course all the other content you're gonna have better gear and that's the aim of this build if you don't have legendary gears i hope you have at this season three uh, everyone has already some legendaries and if you have a good ones that you can replace some of these units just do it because it's gonna help you a lot we are on three minutes it's gonna take a little bit more around four minutes guys so i hope you guys enjoy this fight uh i'm gonna leave the full fight just in case if you want to watch some part uh, of it because you have some doubts or, or some questions about this how, how did i do it so i'm gonna leave the full fight keep watching and i do my final comments after this So guys, this is it, 4 minutes and 3 minutes, okay, but as you guys can see, I already got one piece of legendary gear, uh, my tunnelman was the main damage dealer, uh, but everyone helped with a little bit of more damage. One tip is, uh, so for Nathaniel and Adolphus, I use mainly enlightenment gear to increase their shields, but if you are lacking some damage, you can replace that enlightenment with some more attack, because they build their shields with attack. But it's going also to increase their attack damage. So they're going to do more damage and their shields will still be big. Alright guys, that's my main advice. 
I hope this helps everyone to get some sweet and nice legendary gear and with this improve and make it easier for everyone to do all these contents that we're gonna start doing after getting this level of journey guys. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope I helped everyone with this guide. Don't forget to leave that like and subscribe to my channel that helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.